All right. Good evening, everybody. Happy New Year. Our first meeting for uh, 2023, January 3rd, 2023. Hope everybody had a good New Year's and Christmas. Resolved that the agenda for the January 3rd, 2023 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion. All in favor? Carried. We have Councilor Morio attending by video. <clears throat> Number three, result of the minutes of the December 20th, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. All right, we're moving straight down. This is a short agenda, so we're moving right down to 7 and 7.1. Do we have a... No, we don't have anything there, reports. sorry. We don't. So we're going to move to uh, reports, council reports. I'll start with uh, Council Morio, or Deputy Mayor Morio, sorry. Okay, uh, not too much uh, this... Uh, period uh, with the holidays, but did have a meeting with uh, the Department of Justice on December 22nd uh, with uh, Councillor Bedwin and CEO Poole attending. Um, I guess if you look later on in uh, CEO Poole's, his report, it has sort of the minutes uh, and notes of the meeting, but uh, overall it was a good meeting. Um, topics that we discussed was our um municipal agreements um uh, for policing between uh, the province and some of the issues with that we also brought forward um and asked about uh gis funding and uh how that could look if it was more of a regional approach um they said they would take that back um we also talked about bill c75 and how it's uh, negative result results of uh in, uh affected our communities and others around the country and they 100% agree and know exactly what we're talking about and they are um, in those same conversations with uh, the federal minister uh, regarding those uh, issues. Um, we also brought up some of the non-core policing uh, issues um, that the department or detachment has to do here regarding uh, prisoner relocation and uh, mental health patients um with escorts when they need to go to uh, mental health assessments um they hear us on that they are looking at various solutions on that and one of the possible solutions uh once some of the legislation gets changed um for cso's or community safe safety officers is that a community safety officer may be able to do that transport instead of rcmp um then we brought forward uh Policing costs, along with the uh, uh, a request to know where the Myers Norris Penny uh, leasing cost report is, um, they didn't say it outright. But uh, reading between the lines, um, that report will not be released until late next fall or next year, uh, knowing the election cycle. Um, so, but they did indicate and hint that there will be changes to the. Uh, funding formula for policing and how that's charged out. Um, as Eileen Clark, uh, Minister of Communities, had alluded to in uh, at the AMM. And then, uh, lastly, um, like we all had a good conversation on uh, what a CSO could do for our community, and did um, also tell us that. Uh, for it to be more effective, that uh, they are expecting to table some legislative changes to make CSOs peace officers and expand their uh, capabilities um, in the spring session of the legislature, uh, bringing that forward for first reading. And then uh, lastly, we had a discussion with um, them regarding um, the project, the Community Safety and Wellbeing Pilot Project um, that the community and administration is working on and what our next steps are and where we are at this point and uh, looking to see where that goes but uh, overall it was a very uh, good 
information exchange meeting. Uh, they sympathize with us on a lot of the issues because um, they know exactly where we're coming from. They're doing their best they can to advocate for us and uh, bring things forward to the minister and, the, and higher up the food chain and Department of Justice. And other than that, uh, Happy New Year to uh, all the ratepayers in the town of Swan River and surrounding areas. Happy New Year to the rest of the council. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Balvick. Thank you, Your Worship. I uh, just want to speak a bit about Main Street snow removal. I just We went and entered into an agreement with the Department of Highways. I'd just like to uh, point out that when High Department of Highways did it themselves, they actually didn't haul the snow themselves. They hauled it out. They hired a contractor to do that. I'm just wondering if our contractor we hired could split that bill out so we have a reasoning to talk to Highways saying you used to pay this yourselves. Get the bill split out so that we know what the hauling is. Never mind the grading. It's not a bad that, idea. You know what I mean? Something to go with. Uh, just to speak a bit on snow removal, uh, the grader has been out. It's running sometimes 20 hours a day. They have four major operators for it. Uh, two senior, two trainees, I guess, but they've got it figured out that they uh, put the younger ones on through the day and the older ones through the night. Mike is one of them, so he's kind of mechanic snow blower he's a little bit of everything so he fills in the spots uh, some of the operators wait till they switch off when their children go to bed so then they jump in and go so kudos to them there's been some holidays that slowed it down uh, it usually takes about three days to clean the town up so but if you get two snowstorms that's equal six days so I mean I still think they're doing a great job uh, they could drive to some other towns and you will probably be under the same Impression. Uh, one truck broke down, it's got a cylinder out of it right now, they're waiting on parts for it. So that should be sometime this week and they'll be starting to haul. Uh, in that, you have to realize that six of the employees at the town chopper have been here for under two years. They're training and they're being trained as we speak. Uh, one of the examples today was there's a young lady being trained on skid steer. So she should, but they put them in the yard to clear snow, then they'll move them onto the trackless then that'll be doing sidewalks after that. So there is a effort for everything coming up, so kudos to them. Uh, just a reminder, every time you hear that plane coming in, that runway has to be clean. So it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of manpower to do that, they're doing a great job because that plane's in here quite a bit, so. Uh, just whoever was on the grade or whoever did Main Street, uh, Hats off to him, he did an excellent job. He pulled all around all those trees, all that stuff. He did a really good job cleaning it up. So that's uh, just to uh, speak on the snow removal policy a bit. It is a policy, it's not a law. It's like a living organism. If this one side of town got snow, it doesn't mean the policy that we're gonna, that this is their turn on the other side. The employees all understand that, they go where the needs are. So, but it is a just a policy to follow. Uh, just another thing I want to speak of is Conrad Departments. Have we had any movement on that? Uh, no, no, nothing's changed. It's, it's basically uh, going over tax at all. So there's nothing else we can do to, to get a lawyer involved or? Uh, we asked for like that advanced payment through insurance. That's not a possibility. Okay. And. We're given a green light if we want to spend the money to knock it down. <clears throat> but we okay. to come up with $75,000. Okay. Uh, just to mention that uh, Council's going into budget discussions here right away. Uh, I know it's going to be time consuming and stuff, but would the thoughts of Council ever thought of an afternoon meeting if everybody could attend? I have no problem with Saturdays or whatever. I mean, there's going to be some, it's going to take some time. So I think one long afternoon. Everybody was able to solve a lot of the problems because there'll be lots of questions. So just a thought, food for thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. Thank you. We've done that before. I think okay. once or twice okay. before. So thank you. Um, <clears throat> Council Boycha. Uh, okay. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, I know there was talk about Live Barn at the last uh, meeting, so I think there's it's kind of working its way out and maybe be finalized at the next cow meeting the logistics to get back to recreation on that um, 
And I wanted to point out a huge thank you to the rink staff who managed to get the ODR operational prior to the holiday break. I know my family, along with many others, enjoyed having it to use over the holidays, and we were lucky to have it as it was brought to my attention. Uh, Brendan had noticed a post on uh, Facebook or something uh, with Dauphin and Thompson that they were not able to get their ODR operational before the holidays, so we're very lucky that we had that available for our repairs. Um, I think they had a couple sticks and puck sessions over the holidays as well, which I think went over well. Tanya's followed up with uh, Ken from Friendship Centre and believe that they're interested in doing something. They just need to know the times and, and that. So maybe between uh, Brendan and myself or whatever, Tanya, we can get back to them and say what you're thinking of as far as ice slots for that to continue on. Um, and then I'm thinking that uh, <coughs> Deputy Mayor Morio kind of gave an update on the Swan Valley Planning District meeting that it went well. We <coughs> attended it on December 19th. It was very good. Um, and we also went to the come and or the meet and greet earlier at the watershed, which was very educational. And last, we were asked to come up with maybe some possibilities for the AMM meeting that you're attending, something to ask. And I know I brought it up at one of our other meetings, and I'm going to bring it up again, saying that if we could lobby either the province of Manitoba or AMM to provide some guidance for municipalities with shared services for a formula so that, you know, you're not having to reconfigure this if they can maybe look into something that was maybe based on half assessment, half population, so we're catching the whole gamut of, of the formulas involved to make sure it's fair and equitable for everybody. I really would like to see that. I think it would solve a lot of problems for a lot of municipalities that are trying to figure out to navigate those waters with, with their partners. And I think that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, I did note that one other time that you had mentioned it, mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> I meet up with a few of them on the 17th, so I'm going to bring it up. Perfect. Councilor um, Medley. Well, happy new year to everybody. I uh, hope everyone had a good holiday. Um, well, I, other than the protective services meeting, I don't really, I didn't really attend any other meetings uh, since the last meeting or during the break. Uh, Deputy uh, Mayor Morio did a good summary of that meeting, so that's kind of covered. I did take some time though to uh, take a closer look at some of our bylaws. Um, one of them was the snow removal. I have, I just want to make sure, I have my concerns with the policy itself. It's not with the workers or the work that's being done, but my understanding is the policy is where they get their direction and, and um, that's how it comes to be. I have a concern with the town of Swan River ha holding the contract for the airport services because in a couple situations, and I sent you a, everybody an email on it, but I kind of monitored for myself because I prefer to walk and or have a car that doesn't get around very easily when the streets are cleared. So there's a couple times where I did make the effort to actually pay attention to when the snowfalls were happening, when the plows actually hit the roads. And being that I'm on the uh, Manitoba Age Friendly Committee and have no clear direction, I took another look at that policy, looking at it from that perspective. And as somebody who walks, if I'm having difficulties, then I could only imagine how much difficulty some of our seniors might be having trying to get around. And that includes people who, friends or family that might come to pick them up, to take them out to appointments or services and things like that. So. If holding the contract for the airport delays us getting our staff and equipment onto the town roads, that's a bit of a concern for me and so it's something I would hope to discuss further in a CAL meeting to determine whether or not we currently have the staff equipment and resources to provide both services or whether the airport commission maybe needs to consider contracting that service out so that we can put our priority on our roads and directly to our taxpayers. So that's kind of my uh, biggest takeaway with looking or objective with taking a look at that uh, policy. And the other one was more in how we communicate because I still strongly believe that, that if we 
improve our communication with the public if we're using social media, maybe the radio station, and we let them know when we're going to be having our staff and equipment on those residential roads in particular. I, I feel strongly that most people are going to get their vehicles off the roads so that we can have a clear street which makes it easier and more efficient for the workers, it makes it safer for the workers, it reduces the risk of liability of any damages coming to parked vehicles or things like that. So I think it would just be more efficient all around if we kind of took another look at how we're communicating with the public so that we can work together and kind of have those vehicles off the road so they're not uh, creating big obstacles. Um, other than that was just the, the email I sent out to everyone regarding the animal control bylaw and some of the work I've been putting into that and uh, I see it's coming up on a cow meeting to discuss further. So, yeah. Okay, that's it? Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, Council White. Thank you, Worship. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Your Ukrainian Christmas is coming soon. And uh, I think we should do a little more praying for those who do uh, on Ukrainian Christmas. Uh, I'm going to go back a little in time because I missed the last meeting because my family took priority, which will always occur. Uh, I had a meeting with UCN on December the uh, 7th, and, and we're still working towards bridging uh, where the LPNs could become ours locally. Uh, that hasn't stopped. And uh, CL Poole and I went uh, on December the 12th to the MMF grand opening of their center in Dauphin, which is a pretty spectacular building. I'm pretty excited and positive staff and lots of things happening there. And uh, so I never got a, a couple of really good nudges. I think it was important for, for Derek and I to be there and uh, it was positive in, in our relationship with MMF. So uh, that was all good. And at that, uh, at the dinner, at the luncheon rather, we had we spent a little bit of time with Charlene Gulak, who's the ETO at Kamu Development Officer of Parkland. And she wants to get together with us, our, our team, and uh, she's pretty positive also. That same evening, uh, Derek and I zoomed mm -hmm. back, and I got back to the LP meeting at uh, the LP mill, and then looked at the, the shakes. Uh, I don't know, three or four hundred men and women working out there, five hundred million dollar building, uh, they, and they go out of their way to help the environment, to help our economy. So, a pretty positive uh, process of, of actions happening out there. Then on December 12th, they had the Public Works Luncheon, and I think it's important to, uh, to compliment that team for all the positive work. Uh, Councilor knew that earlier, these guys and, and girls work hard, and apparently they can do any job that any guy can do. Of course, Tracy would agree with that, and I have two daughters. I'm no, I'm no longer a chauvinist. It's God's way to getting back at me. Uh, December 13th, uh, we met with Johnson Controls, and obviously we're still looking at uh, what they have with the rank, where it's to go, and how it's to get there. Then on December 14th, we the Airport Commission. I'm giving you the pricey. If you have any more questions, feel free to chase me down. At uh, the Johnson Control, we mentioned the Airport Commission, we're still discussing finances, who pays for it and how, whether it's uh, per capita or an assessment. And that's going to come up at our next uh, G6789, whatever it is, number meeting. So hopefully that will come to fruition sooner than later. Then. Uh, Councillor Bobbick coordinated the watershed meeting on December the 16th at Open House where the, your team members were there, many council members. I think all of our team that could make it, all of this council were there. And a compliment to the team to try to find out what to do. And you have a multi-million dollar budget trying to make our environment better to, to manage water flow. It doesn't stop in the town of Sun River, it moves on. It doesn't start here, it comes from up there. So as you collaboratively and collectively work together, it's pretty cool. Uh, we were to go off the settlement services on December the 27th. Uh, what a wonderful evening. I had 150 plus people from all nations of the world. From a cultural perspective, awesome. The food was excellent. And from an economic perspective, awesome. Because all those communities come and they bring their friends, hopefully. And uh, a handful of us were able to make it. If you weren't there, we probably because you couldn't make it. On uh, the 26th, I met uh, with the MLA to talk about CT scan. He's uh, extremely optimistic. He's You've got the timelines for the Minister of Health and the Premier, so I, I will stay optimistic that that certainly is not forgotten. Uh, MLA Wojcik is working hard for that. And coming up in the very near future, uh, the Medical Services Committee, the, Your Worship, myself and uh, Councillor uh, Powell will be meeting with Dr. Burnside and his team 
to look at medical services, or recruiting, retaining, how do we do that, who do we recruit, who do we retain, how much do we pay, how much do we not pay. And I also have a meeting come up soon with the Swan Valley School Division and Cam Mateka, Dr. Mateka, is meeting with UCN, what would that ask that, UCN, about the bridging thing. So uh, that hasn't, hasn't stopped. And today, uh, 20 minutes ago, I met with a senior police officer, uh, senior staff sergeant of crime and drugs, and interesting perspectives and suggestions. And he says, have we ever looked at private? I says, of course we looked at private. He'd certainly be willing to talk to him, uh, talk with us. And he says, Altona, is Altona all private? Mm -hmm. He says, a phone call to them, how much does it cost, where does it go? He says, it might be worth a call. Then my wife and I and our grandchildren had a look at the outdoor rink behind the uh, Centennial Arena. Is that the right word? Awesome. Flat. They had the Zamboni out there. So a compliment to our team again for, for doing that. That's it. Thank you. <coughs> I didn't know when you were going to stop. <coughs> Oh, I'm just kidding. Thank, thank <laughs> yeah, you. Now we're all up to date, so yeah. thank you. Yeah, write it down. <clears throat> I don't have too much to uh, report than what has already been discussed. I had some telephone conversations with the two Reeves <clears throat> in the last two weeks. And that obviously is on some shared services and protective services as well. And then it's on kind of ongoing. Um, I do have a lot of meetings in the next few weeks, as probably most of you guys will be as well, as with uh, Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation and also with uh, the business group, which I'm meeting with the business group with Mr. Poole tomorrow evening to discuss some of the uh, crime items that they want to uh, target. So that's kind of ongoing, but other than that, that's it for me. <clears throat> Mr. Poole. Uh, just to highlight a few things in my my report, uh, this one isn't a very detailed report, but just something the council can expect, as opposed to me not putting something on there that I'll I'll just kind of list <coughs> what's going to be happening in our future cal meetings, uh, and sort of what's just just to keep council uh, involved on, on what is unfinished, what what we're working on, or what needs to be done. But uh, highlighted in that is. Uh, uh, a presentation by the CFO, tentative date will be next Tuesday. That may change, but uh, uh, we just want to let council know of the town's financial position, and then we will have, uh, again, tentative meeting, but for the 2023 budget meeting will be the <coughs> January 24th. So we do. We still we still have some work to do on the budget, and managers are are going to be uh, working on that until then. But expect a presentation uh, next Tuesday. Other than that, uh, Minnetonas Bozeman did get back to us, and they have January 10th through the 18th for meeting dates. So I'd like to confirm one of those tonight. Uh, January the 10th. Is that whatever? Uh, Look at your calendars and the tenth is our cal meeting where we are supposed to talk about the financial position, animal control, snow removal, and fee schedule. Oh right, this this is with Minnetonas Bozeman. Yeah, yeah. This will be just a committee, so not everybody has to pres uh, be there at that meeting. Okay, so the eighteenth is the following Wednesday. Eighteenth works. Actually, eighteenth works perfect for me. Eighteenth does not. 18th is our Swan Valley uh, oh, med medical professional meeting. Yeah, that's a recruiting. Mm. Right. right. But, I, but you, you don't have, like I said, the whole, not the whole council's going to attend. But that's just for you. Committee. You said it's perfect for you. Yeah, but you know what? If I have to miss that meeting and you two can go, I can go to this one. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Because I think it, it works like that day is better for me than and any other day. Because that's the General <clears throat> Government and Finance Committee? Right. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, does that work for you too? Uh, the 18th, yeah, I can uh, attend that, and I'm sure Councillor White and Powell can handle the medical professional recruitment. So, um, we can meet in the same building. We can use either room as well, unless Mayor Thomas Bozeman wants us out in there. I'll ask her. Okay. Because uh, we booked this room. Yeah, I know that. I don't was, care where we meet, but yeah, way. yeah. It's not a deal. I realized that it was done last week, so yeah. 
So we'll plan for the 18th then. Yep. Okay. Thank you. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> okay. Moving on to 10 accounts, 10.1. Resolve the accounts that follows the year by approved for payment. General accounts checks number 29784 to 29821 totaling 78,000. Eight hundred and fifty-six and seven cents is listed on Schedule A. Checks number twenty-nine eight hundred nine was voided uh, as uh, was the wrong pay and replaced by check number twenty-nine eight one seven. Payroll accounts checks number five two three six to number five two four two, totaling ninety-two thousand four hundred and forty-seven dollars and fifty-eight cents as listed on Schedule B. Uh, payroll accounts checks number five two four three to number 5249, totaling $105,034.09 as listed on Schedule C. Direct deposits payments totaling $815 as listed on Schedule D. And direct deposits payments totaling $42,469.08 as, as listed on Schedule E. Moved by Councillor Edwards, seconded by I have a question. Yeah, when it needs to be said, you want to second it? Sure. Okay, seconded by Councillor Powell, I mean, Boychuk. Question. So, check number 29789 is to Cook Brothers in the amount of $13,597.50 for Main Street and 4th North. And I was under the impression that that's handled by highways, or we pay for that, or how, I thought highways did that. That was, go ahead. So I actually was going to speak on this to answer Councillor Bobick's uh, question in his report. The breakdown of that fifteen thousand is just over four thousand, four thousand and fifty dollars to blade it, and eight thousand nine hundred dollars to to haul it. So that's roughly the breakdown between grading it and and hauling it away. But yes, we do Main Street. So that's the agreement that we signed in December. Uh, we agree to a lump sum amount, which is pretty close to that amount for the entire year, for the entire winter. So every time we do this, it costs us that amount of money. The, the alternative is, is we don't go into that agreement, tell them it's theirs, and we go through weeks of it not being done. And we end up doing it anyways. That's what, that's what I you know, we, we lobby, we tell them we need to get it done, need to get it done. It just doesn't happen. Mm. And then we hear it. Mm -hmm. Councilor Medler. Um, this was one of my questions, uh, just in addition to that, is how many, like, what date period does that include? How many snowfall, cleaning, plowing, removal? <sighs> Does that include? Is it literally? It, it's honestly, it's up to the director of public works of when he calls the contractor to go uh, with the amount of snowfalls. Is that what you're asking? Well, I understand that, but yeah. for this particular billing, yeah, how many times was the plow out on the road? I, I'm assuming it's probably only the one clearing, or is there two clearings two included now. in there? Okay. Yeah. So that, that's the other thing I wanted to know. This so far, this winter. So. You pay double. That's. One shop there, right? That's this one is shop. kind of this up is... to date the end of December? No, this is one cleaning of Main Street. One cleaning of Main Street. So, so we, we still three. have one outstanding. Have we had three already? Yeah, there's okay, so three. Okay, so only one topic. Sorry. So, Councillor Medwood. Um, that's what I'm trying to understand is because we've had at least three to four snowfalls that have required plows on the road. So, this particular filling, is it just for one plowing and one snow removal, so there's still three or four more to come in the future? Uh, potentially. Typically, potentially. Yes. Yes. Well, not to mention the rest. Okay, yeah. that's um, good to know. Um, just a little side note, I'm pretty sure it's been made clear that this is something we'd like you to lobby for at the AMM level. This, <laughs> Which this, just this will a be reminder. something more than just that. It'll be also with the minister as well. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, this is a little more fair distribution of um, tax uh, I don't know who had their hand up first there, but I'll go with uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Morio and then CFO Ganita. Uh, I'll let CFO Ganita go because I believe he had a response to uh, when Councillor Medwood, so he may have something on that topic before I move to the next inquiry. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, this particular invoice was for November 29 and 30, 
and December 8 and 9. So it appears to be two clearings. No, that's incorrect. There was, uh, there was several days in between the grading and the hauling. So Darren gave the approval to grade Main Street, and that's when we had it up in uh, the windrow for quite a long time. Uh, he, he was stalling. He was stalling to spend those dollars. So it is, this is one. Okay. Okay, okay uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. <clears throat> um, check number 29791, and then check, and that's to, uh, it's for the uh, formal motors for the wiring harness for the garbage truck. And then there's a check 29814 to heavy duty drive in um, for a wiring harness and some other stuff there. Is there two wiring harnesses that were bought or is that uh, one? I, I will have to get back to you on that one to see uh, which is like, which. which I'm, Mr. Yeah, I was not here me. tonight. <clears throat> no rush, just uh, occurring if that's two separate wiring harnesses or one bought and it was the wrong one returned and then went to a different location to get a different one. Okay. Yeah, I can did, get back to you. Did you have anything further? No, nope, that's it. Thank okay. you. Councilor Bobbitt. Uh, speaking with Mike today, that's just been one wiring harness. That's all it is. The other part, I don't, I think that was... They tried to fix it, but it ended up being they needed a wiring harness. Okay, well, we'll find out exactly. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Medlin. Okay, I have a few, but just to clarify on this one we were just talking about, because that was on my list. So this is a one of expense or repair. This isn't something that regularly has to be serviced or replaced on the garbage garbage truck okay because that's a pretty high price to be regularly <laughs> required um, the other one uh, or the next one that I have is check number 29795 lakeside process controls for value actuator for water treatment plant is this a one of type expense again or is this something that we regularly it's something that broke down and needed to be replaced okay one Okay, fair enough. Um, and on, for that check 29814 to drive in heavy duty, what is Bacter safety? I'm guessing uh, that's a third party uh, safety of the vehicle that we had to pay for, but I, again, I, I'll be looking into that check to, to give council a full breakdown. No, that's, that's good to know. And check number 29818. December 22nd, RCAP leasing, 861.23 for pool and arena copiers. It's a quarterly lease. Do we not own our copiers? Like, I'm, I'm not familiar with how expensive these things are to buy. Is it cheaper to lease them yes. or is it more cost effective to just buy it outright? No, we do, we do lease our copiers. The purchase price is costly. Okay. And, um... That takes care of a couple on Schedule E. Uh, Schedule A, Gardwine North for 866. It wasn't on the um, explanation list. Yeah, it would have been for freight for, I can find out which, but it would be freight cost for, I'll have to find that out. It would be some part for, Um, Director of Recreation. It's likely for chemical shipping for the aquatic center. Okay, thank you. CFO Gadita. Yes, that's correct. It was chemicals for the aquatic center. And the PepsiCo for 30430, is that for vending machines or? PepsiCo. Okay. Director of Recreation. I believe that's for the hall um, pot dispenser. Thank you. I think that that covers it all because Schedule E was copier leases as well. Thank you. Okay. As time goes on, I remember when I was first elected, I asked a lot of these questions because 
you wonder what they are. They're good questions. And so I know the CFO, you know, kind of gives us a cheat sheet there too, but as time goes on, you'll start to see some of these will be reoccurring and then you'll just know what they are. And I'm remembering but, that. I'm retaining <clears throat> it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> good. Uh, Councilor Boycha. So I also have the uh, RCAP, the arena and the pool copiers down too, because I'm just wondering how much copying do we actually do at the pool and at the arena? And if there was like large amounts to be printed or whatever, could we not do that here? And then we're not renting to there. Like I've got a $600, it photocopies, it scans, it prints, you name it. And it's pretty, we'd be cheaper to buy one of those every year than lease this. Like it's $3,444.92. I had to do some math there because I seen it on schedule E the two amounts, so I added it together and then divided it by four and three. Okay, it's the same thing, it's just one's direct deposit or whatever. And then uh, a couple other questions I had um, for Matt Linick, he's uh, got the $20 there and uh, Derek P wish is 50. And I think, are they both not part-time? I'm just wondering uh, the difference there. Uh, one is part-time. Well, like, sorry, they, they both are part-time. Matt's would be a cell phone. It's, yeah, I think that's what they both are. So I was just wondering if they're both part time, why are they different? And then the same thing with Don Hagman and Keegan. I I just didn't know. I wasn't sure if they were same hours or not. One was twenty, one was fifty. So I just questioned those two things. Yeah, I'd have to look and see what the twenties are. The fifties sound like cell phone allowance, but I will uh, I will look into those. Okay, we'll find that out for you. And then. Uh, breakdown of copier use. Yeah, check that uh, uh, arena wellness center. Um, Councilor Bobbitt. I guess just with that copier use, is that a lease or is it that easy to get out of? It may oh, be. Oh yeah, we would, we would sign an agreement, yeah. yeah. Okay, further discussion? Uh, Director of Recreation. I can speak to the copier used quickly. Um, the recreation at the arena in the office, it gets used quite heavily because that's our hub for, you know, staff schedules, all that sort of thing. Uh, the one at the pool uses it heavily as well for printing report cards, advertising, all our life saving society materials. Uh, we did downgrade the aquatic center photocopier lease. It did have a massive Rico photocopier in there before. So what we did is we took that that lease and essentially downgraded to two smaller machines um, within that original lease amount um, and then ended up getting one for each facility. Uh, we, we did downgrade quite a bit, like we don't have a massive uh, print scope anymore. So it's just the eight and a half by 14 and uh, the wellness center needed a bigger trade is for advertising report cards, that sort of thing. But we did downgrade and um, combine two new lease agreements into one essentially, um, just quite recently here in the past four months. Okay, thank you. Could we not utilize the one here though? That's what I'm wondering. That's like a $3,000 potential savings a year. Well, 3,400 basically if we bought those smaller ones for day-to-day -day stuff and then your heavier printing of your advertising and that, could that not be done at this office? Like that's that's a lot of money. You times yeah. up by th 10 years, you've got $35,000 there. We can, we can get that, you know, we can have a more discussion about outside the of budget. this here yeah, sure. and uh, budget. Well, we'll have the director kind of get some information, or maybe if you want to, you know, go and check things out and just see exactly what he's saying, and then mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. And I did a, a no no, bad, bad. Um, I missed Councillor Powell. <clears throat> I'm so sorry for your report. I just. Councillor White took up so much time that I, I just thought, geez, you know, and when you we went to Dauphin. When you were with us. Oh. I'm sorry. White. No, so I'm not supposed to be I was Dolphin. not supposed to be here anyway tonight, but I'll Okay. Good day. We'll, we'll I want, I want I, okay, that's fine. I want to give you the opportunity though, so I do apologize. No. Well, happy new year and Merry Christmas to everybody. Um no, not too much. Everything kind of said everything kind of thing, but um, interagencies did uh, was supposed to meet just before Christmas. Um, they po postponed that till later in January, so there'll be some interesting things discussed at that meeting, I believe. 
Um, I had a chance to review the Stampeders contract and go through that a little bit closer. Um, January 12th, uh, I will be attending the Prairie Mountain Human Resource Meeting, board meeting, and so that should be some interesting things as well taking place there. Um, January 13th is the due date for the Manitoba Trails Grant Program. That's coming up too, so if, I'm not sure if we were where we were at with that, but that's coming up. Um, and January 18th, we're, of course, like you said, we're meeting with the medical professionals for recruiting, so we'll meet together with them. Um, and just one other thing was that I was presented a check from Matt Black and Shannon Gochi for the town beautification project for $1,000. So. Yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to at some point um, do our thank yous and so on yeah. and so forth. We'll get them a letter. Uh, yeah. do, they, do they want to do a photo or anything like that? Do you know? I, you know what? I never mentioned. I wasn't quite sure how that works. So I, I can yeah. mention that. Yeah, reach out to them. And yeah. We certainly want to recognize them and thank them for their, for their, you know, their help for our community. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you want to come here, we can get a letter, like a letter and thank you. Thank you. Okay, so did I miss anybody else? <laughs> <coughs> okay, so number 13, result of pursuance of sections uh, 152 3 of the Municipal Act Council going to committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we'll be discussing um, purchase service agreements, uh, an arena update and also a uh, personnel kind of issue. So um, I think that was it. So moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Medwood. Discussion, all in favor? It's carried, we're in camera. <laughs> Result of this regular meeting of council now will be adjourned at 9.42 p.m. Moved by Councillor Reddy, Lovick. <laughs> second by Councillor uh, Powell, discussion. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. This will be with a short meeting.